Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here to showcase and teach you and reveal to you one of the main ingredients and one of the most important mixing tricks in your toolbox that you might be missing out on if you're not happy with your mixes. I hear it time and time and time again. People will send me their mixes and say, oh, I just can't get the clarity in my guitars. My vocals don't sound professional. My MIDI drums or my sample drums sound so fake. And most of the time, what it comes down to is that they're just not automating their tracks. Most people have absolutely no idea how important automation is and also just how much professional producers and mixers utilize automation in their productions to bring out power, punch, clarity, and just overall create a compelling sounding mix. Now for the first time ever, I'm actually filming this video standing up with my standing desk. Gotta work off those holiday calories. So with that being said, in this video, I'm gonna showcase three real world examples of how I'm using automation in three different mixes on three different instrument groups. Let's first talk about vocal automation. Now, yes, pro sounding vocals are usually pretty compressed, well dialed in with EQ, but when you listen to your favorite records, more often than not, the engineer and mixer has gone in there and really dialed in automation to bring out specific words and phrases that they want the listener to take notice of. Now I have an example here of some clean vocals in a heavy rock track. Let's take a listen to it and then I'll show you some of the automation that's happening behind the scenes. But let's check it out. Now, if you notice, every single nook and cranny of the performance was pretty clear and upfront. Now, the interesting thing is if I were to delete this automation, and if we just look at the vocal level wise, you're gonna notice it's already pretty compressed, but let's take a listen to it without the automation. And also, Pay close attention to the vocal level wise in the uh, actual meter. Okay, it's passable, but there are certain parts of the performance that I just wanna go in there and just turn up. So if we look here with the automation uh, put back to the way it was, Specific words are boosted and other words are cut. Now to be honest with you, when I do this, I'm kind of in the flow state and I don't overthink it. I just listen to the music and ask myself what I wanna hear more of in the vocal performance. I've already gone in, EQ'd the vocal, compressed the vocal to where it's sitting pretty evenly throughout the performance, but I'm going in there and taking that extra step to apply automation and bring out those key phrases that I feel are compelling and that I just wanna hear more of. That's the thing, a lot of people ignore automation because they think it's a daunting task. And let's be real, it's not as fun as messing with compressor plugins, talking about outboard gear, and messing with the latest and greatest AmpSim. But it makes a world of difference. And the best part is, is that it's absolutely free. Any DAW is capable of automation. It's amazing. So that's the moral of the story here is go into your vocal performances and do not be scared of volume automation. And most important of all, do not overthink it. All right, now let's talk about the next area where most people kind of skimp out, especially when it comes to home studio owners that are working with MIDI drums, uh, working completely by themselves on their own music, and that is drum automation. Here's the thing, especially with MIDI drums, it's so easy to make your drums sound overly sterile and robotic and nothing like what you hear on your favorite records. And the truth is a little bit of volume automation and even MIDI manipulation as far as varying the velocities goes a long way. Way. And in this example, I'm gonna showcase to you how much manipulating the kick drum with volume automation can add to a drum performance, specifically a MIDI drum performance. Let's take a listen to the sample. Now, 
Now, if you notice that riff, it went dig it, dun 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 dig it, dig it, dun 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 dig it, dig it, dun dun dig it, dig it, dun dig it, 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 right? Now, what most people tend to do is just mess with EQ, leave their kick drums exactly as they are, and that's it. But we have to remember, an actual drummer in the real world will hit certain sections harder if they're a good drummer to accent and highlight certain areas of a performance. So what I've done is I wanted that riff to sound ultra heavy and I wanted to breathe some life into this sterile program drum performance by highlighting only those chuggy parts of the riff and a few of the accents afterward. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna delete the automation much like I did with the vocal performance and let's listen closely to the riff and the drum without this little bit of extra volume boost on my kick drums. Let's check it out. As you can hear it, it makes the song and just the performance sound overall much weaker and it makes my mix sound weaker. And again, we are not talking about EQ. We are not talking about compression. We are not talking about what drum software I'm using. It's irrelevant. It's just a simple fact that I had gone in there and boosted the kick drums only for those sections of the riff just to bring out the attack. The reason why this is important is so many mixers are looking for that magical level, but often it has to vary in order for it to work within your mix. You cannot have your kicks super duper loud the entire time or super duper quiet. As you can hear when I had the kicks sitting at their normal level, they got lost throughout that riff and it just wasn't as compelling sounding. But when I went in there and boosted the kick at the beginning of the riff, and then the tail end of the riff right here and right here, it not only made the drum sound a little more natural, it also made the riff sound way heavier. A subtle, subtle move that goes a long way. And again, it's absolutely free. Did not require any new plugins, nothing. Just a little bit of a volume boost that was intentional while going through the song and listening in that flow state. Let's take a listen once more. I think you get the idea. So simple, does not require a lot of time or energy or even skill level. It just takes sitting down, listening to your music, not overthinking it and boosting sections in the drum performance, whether it's a snare, kick, toms, cymbals that you wanna bring out more and ultimately help your song overall sound compelling to the listener. Now by far, by far, one of the most common questions I get from viewers is where they could do better with their guitar tracks. Some common complaints are guitar muddiness, harsh guitars, guitars all fighting for the same space. And right away people ask about what plugins they should use, what multiband compression settings they should use. Should I use MS processing? Should they get the Axe Effects, the Kemper, the Bias Effects, or whatever it's called plugin? The reality is you have to, have to, have to go in there and use volume automation with your heavy guitar tracks, especially if you're layering your guitars and you want them to all be heard clearly within your production. Now, most people, again, tend to shy away from this because it's just not exciting. You know, it's much more exciting to mess around with toys than to actually do real work, go in there and get things right within the mix, the old school way. Yes, it's the old school way, but all pro producers do this. So right here, I have an audio sample by my good friends in a band called Mainline. It's a single called In Secrecy We Trust. We just wrapped it up in my studio. And let's take a close listen to all of the stuff that's happening with the guitars during the chorus and then throughout the guitar leads and guitar solo. Let's check it out.
as you can hear, a lot of stuff going on uh, with the guitars. You have the chugging rhythms, you have the ripping guitar leads, and you also have a call and response thing happening between the two guitar players. So let me just show you what I have going on as far as volume automation. And I don't want you to be intimidated. At its core, this is super, super basic and straightforward. I'm simply going in there and adjusting the volume of the guitars. That's it. The first thing I want to highlight is my rhythm guitars during the guitar solo are ducked down or reduced by about a dB. That's it. That alone will go a long way for creating space for your lead guitars. So many mixes, and when I say so many, I mean literally 90% of the mixes that people send me, they have the rhythm guitars, then they have leads coming in on top of that, then the leads pop out and things sound empty because everything's at one static level. Not gonna work if you want your mixes to sound professional. So right away, if you wanna create extra space for your leads, it's just duck the rhythm guitar volume down by a dB, maybe two dB. The listener's not gonna notice it, and it's gonna create a ton of extra space for your leads. Also, in this example here, you have a left guitar that comes in for the lead guitar solo, and then you have a right guitar that comes in. And I have some detailed automation going on here, but the most important thing to remember is that I've gone in and when the two leads are happening together, I've reduced the volume of the leads submix. Because remember, if you have a lead guitar and then all of a sudden a second one happens at the same time, it's gonna all of a sudden sound like the leads got loud out of nowhere. And then when the other guitar is gone, the leads are gonna all of a sudden sound too quiet. So much like with the rhythm guitars, I've gone in there and just cut the volume of the leads when both guys are playing at the same time and then brought it up to its normal level when the guy's playing on the right by himself and then brought it back down when they're playing together. And um, that's it, super straightforward. It really isn't rocket science. You just have to listen and ask yourself, do the guitar sound empty here? Uh, is there too much happening at once? And volume automation goes a long way. I'm gonna create more videos on this topic because it really is important. And most people just either don't do it or don't wanna do it, and it's a shame, again. It's free, and all DAWs are capable of this. It doesn't matter if you're using Reaper, Studio One, Logic, Cubase, Harrison Mix Bus, or Pro Tools. They all do it, and they've all been doing it for decades. So there you have it. These three tips right here will take your mixes so much further along if you're not utilizing automation at this point in time. Now my question to you is this. Are you currently using automation in your mixes? Is it something that you do and you hate doing, or are you maybe not doing it at all? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion on this topic and what you've been up to in your studio. And I also wanna say this, we live in the absolute best time in human history to be a hard rock or metal recording engineer. And that's because we have these excellent tools at our disposal called MIDI drums and am sims. The issue is that so many people make the same mistakes over and over and over again with these tools. And they end up spending tons of money on the latest and greatest software only to produce the same lackluster results. And because of this, I've put together a MIDI drums and am sims production checklist. In the PDF guide, I highlight these mistakes so you could avoid making them and start producing better results in your studio with the tools you're currently using. The MIDI Drums and Amp Sims production checklist is absolutely free right now, and you can have direct access by clicking the link below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. And until next time, happy automation.